see you by yourself. <laughs> Is it recording? Yep. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's to be Wait, all the things. Team, 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 He can't see it. Yeah, but like the side. Scene one, roll two, take one, action. And then what else? Five, roll one, take one. Yeah. Scene one, take. Scene one, yeah, roll stop, two. Stop, stop, stop. Some random. Show me the bath. Yeah. Sophie. So Alright, back to it. Done. Perfect. That's four squares. Three. Four. I think I know what I The first time where you go outside, pan him, show him, and then show me. Yes, but I don't think any of you will know this. My brain. Even Viraj, you're, you're pretty close to me. Are you, you Catholic or? or I'm, I'm Catholic. Kevin. Kevin is not brother. Lately, I've become very religious. Good. That's good. So what is it? It's okay. I'm dying. I'm actually dying. I'm actually dying. I'll tell you later. Oh, promise. I'll tell you later. Promise. Ah, fuck. Come on, turn. There we go. Come on. Oh, come on, you have one job. There we go. Well, welcome to the set of cycle. I am bro Come on, look at me. There we go. Welcome to the set of cycle. Ah, give up. Welcome to the set of cycle. I here am Raj Jaswani. The... I, and I play Dr. Marco. Uh, yo, Mons, quite the detective you be. I be telling you to stay away. Dude, back off. What is a mosquito? Yeah, don't, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Wait, where's the... Oh, so did you take the pen? Where's the pen? It's in your bag. Which one? In your pocket. Hey, I did it. <laughs> the bell right? It's fine, it's fine. One thing I'm gonna tell you, don't stop recording until I tell you. Okay, just keep recording. Just start the recording again. I'll I'll prompt you the line because I'm gonna cut it. It's fine. Okay. Hey there, what's going on guys? Thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful journey that I've been through. Uh, this is Cycle, the documentary. I, I, I would just like to start off by saying thank you, to, thank you so much to those people who have supported me with uh, the making of this film when it happened, especially my school, uh, all my friends and family, uh, pretty much anyone who, who's given me hope over the past three years really uh, about this film. And, and it's kind of that expectation, that support, that love that you guys have shown that uh, has, has brought me to this place where I can really make this for you guys. Uh, and and I, I really do appreciate that. And I'm quite ha happy and thankful. 
and uh, and that support is gonna help me out in uh, future projects that I work on. Uh, obviously, it's not so professional as if it's a proper documentary, but it is something that I've wanted to do as as opposed to the traditional film method. Because as you all know, I, I wasn't really able to complete the film up to my standard or up to any standard to, to begin with. Because uh, really, the story was there, I had the screenplay, but unfortunately, I didn't have the, the manpower needed or the resources uh, after a specific period of time. Uh, and that's because of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is the main reason why this happened anyway. Uh, obviously, this story is centered around my school, which I am no longer in because of my graduation uh, last year. The movie initially started in 2019, uh, the short film, I shouldn't say movie, the short film. The, the idea came to me in 2019, around the beginning of the year. And uh, later that year, the same year, I, uh, I, I already had all the designs planned out. This entire movie was kind of working towards the end of 2019 where the, the script was finalized. I had a group of cast members, which is basically just me and Viraj who were in this film. Uh, but after that, we moved on to the filming portion, which was towards the end of the winter of 2019 to the beginning of spring around there. We kind of ended and shut off our filming at the beginning, I think around February 2020. And the main reason for that was because our final exams were coming up, meaning we were about to graduate. And my film was coming to an end right when that was going to happen. And my plan was to finish off the film, right? Once my exams would finish, I would go back to school with my, just my cast and crew, and we would finish off the film uh, after having graduated, since it's not going to be an issue. I've already gotten permission from school, uh, I've talked to the board, and they were okay with me making a film based off of the school environment and the campus. So legally speaking, it wasn't going to be an issue even if I wasn't studying there anymore. Uh, so in terms of the location and the set and all it wasn't big it wasn't that big of an issue when i was in indonesia when this was happening but the issue was the covid 19 pandemic and when that hit it kind of restricted every one of us to not go back to campus uh the last time i ever went into campus was probably around the end of march um ever since that happened i never even went back to school until july for my graduation which was only for a day and that too was very very tightly restricted because of all the guidelines we had to follow due to COVID-19. So realistically speaking, any footage that I haven't finished or had planned to finish on, or on a later, later date never happened because it was impossible for me to go back into, uh, into the campus and film just that, especially when the entire country was on lockdown. So with that in mind, I pretty much lost hope because there was no other way I could physically finish these scenes. Uh, and that's something that I had to deal with. And which is kind of why I'm I'm doing this now because I realized a year after this happened, it's 2021, I realized, you know what, there's another way we could do this. I, I, I could throw this off as something new I can do. I can use this opportunity as, as a learning experience. And so that's what this entire thing is about. And it's kind of what I wanted to do with, with the cycle because I had an unfinished film, but I had most, if not the most required scenes really. Uh, some of them, obviously the main important ones I didn't have. And that kind of sucked because it, the, the film wouldn't flow together properly without those scenes and I never got the chance to record them and that really frustrated me even up till now talking about it, it really does get me angry because I had, I had a vision, I had an idea and even up to today, up to, today, up to the film that you're about to watch in a few minutes time, it, it is not what it could have been. So pretty much what went wrong with this film was that I didn't complete any of the filming. Uh, the story was good, if I should say so myself, and I didn't want it to make a com complicated film or a complicated idea for my very first short film that I was going to make because, again, it's my very first one and, I, and, and there's obviously stuff that's going to go wrong and uh, I thought if I was going to make a product that's good, I would do my best to make it the best it could be. So the idea of this documentary pretty much came to me when I was in the army. Uh, I had a lot of time to myself and I really had a lot of thoughts and I, my passion and my, my drive really started to come through when I was watching Prison Break. Uh, it was a show that I've never actually watched before and I started to get into it like around early this year and I was quite regretting myself. I was like, why, why haven't I watched this before? It's, it's so good. These, these actors are two of my favorite actors I've seen through Flash and I was like, well, 
this is amazing. And, and watching the show gave me the kind of inspiration that I never thought I'd have. And which is why I came up with this documentary idea where I can show you guys where I really thought would, would have been a good idea to do and what really failed. So this isn't necessarily my best ability, as in it, what I'm showing you right now, the product you're seeing is not the best of what I could have done, but really what went wrong? Well, I, I've made the best I could with what I had, but it isn't necessarily what I thought would be the best of its ability, if you know what I'm saying. So what's different from this and an original film? Well, later on you will see that some, some scenes actually uh, aren't, aren't filmed at all. So what I did instead was use this application called CineTracer, which is quite commonly used for a lot of feature films. People, what they do is they use it to storyboard, they use the animations, they create their sets, the lighting and all that, and they film or take photos of each little, little tiny snippets, the roles for each scene, and use that as a storyboard to reference when they're actually on set and filming. What I decided to do with that was I used the software and decided to use that as my actual scene um, because the good thing is most of the sequences were motion sequences and the cine tracer did a pretty decent job at doing that so I had to go into the reality of the cine tracer and work through that application and so I used it to pretty much get this idea, get a get a, get an idea of what the environment would have been, would have been like. I tried to recreate my school sets as much as I could with the amount of stuff that I was uh, that was available to me, with the materials that was given to me in the game, uh, and and anything else that I could use to create the sort of the ambience that I'm looking for. And uh, that's pretty much what I've done, what I've, what I've accomplished with with that. And anyone who's been to my school would know that it looks kind of similar or the most most similar to what I've tried to achieve. Uh, and, and that's pretty cool because it, it also allowed me to experiment with something I've never done before, which is in a tracer and using that animation to, you know, embed that into my live action short film. It, it was quite intriguing and quite, quite interesting. So the storyboard thing is what I was gonna talk about next. The final scene of the film uh, is actually really different. What I've shown, what the final product that I've given you guys in, in this short film is very, very different. It's actually one of the most stupidest things I've ever done in my life, if I, if I have to be really sure. One of the processes, or one of the beginning processes of, of my filmmaking uh, is pretty much making these storyboards, right? I, I, I like to draw things. I'm not really good at them. That's, a different, that's an entirely different topic, but I tend to write them down and draw down each, each little role for each scene. Uh, because th th that shows flows, that, that shows pre-planning, pre-production planning is by far one of the most important things in filmmaking. Uh, and without a proper plan, you're going to be, you know, really lost on set. And uh, what we try to do is save as much time as you can on set because you're taking up time of the entire cast and crew. And for me, because I'm not paying anybody, because this is, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this either. So I'm not only producing my own film, which I'm not making any profit from, but I'm also not paying anyone who's helping me out here. So anyone who's doing jobs here for me, as in the cinematographer, the, the musician, uh, any other actors here, they're all doing it as a favor for being my friend. They're not doing it because they're getting paid. And for that is what I'll be really thankful for, like I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, and, and to take that into consideration is why pre-production planning is very, very important, very crucial. Having a script printed out for each and every member out there in the cast was really crucial. And so what I would do is I would take the script and each page of the script, let's say for scene one, at the end of that scene one, I would have a separate page or a few pages really, and have storyboards for each scene. I would draw down each scene as I saw it in my head and be like, okay, so this is what I want the scene to look like in, in, in post-production. Once the film is being shot, I, this is what I want to see. This is my, my visual idea, my directorial intention. This is what I, what I have. If you want something done right, do it yourself because you know what is right for you, right? You can't expect someone else to do something that, uh, that you want to look good of. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, know how to, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's just, yeah, if you want done something right, do it yourself. I mean, once this storyboard stuff was done, I, I decided to show you guys a few sneak peeks of uh, what actually happened before the cycle you're seeing now. The cycle you guys know now is actually very, very different to the cycle that I started off with. The story is cycle started in 2019, but the truth is it started in the beginning of 2018. January 2018, I was in India for uh, 
my cousin's uh, engagement. I went to India for his engagement, uh, marriage engagement is what I meant. Uh, and and I, I'm, I'm, I think exactly January 17th, uh, that date, I remember very, very vividly, I was standing facing the white wall in my aunt's house and I had an idea, just a split moment, an idea for a short film. I don't know why, but I was very stoked and I, and I had this sort of, uh, this drive, this passion that I wanted to do something with my, with my idea, with my passion, with my, with my, uh, my skill set. Uh, and my knowledge I have in all this filmmaking, the stuff that I've learned throughout, accumulated throughout from uh, watching Film Riot on YouTube. Um, the first mistake that I did was um, not write it myself. I decided to write the story with someone else, especially a kids kids younger than me, because we were all in like one group doing our, our theater uh, years. Um, I was in a lot of dramas, and those kids were pretty much like my my mentees. They're like my uh, my go-to guys when we're doing something like making videos or or just chilling around. Those guys knew how to act, and they knew their game. Uh, they knew art as as opposed to a random person you would meet and ask them to act in your film. A few of them were interested in the cinema line. And so I thought, you know what? I'm also get learning in this. I might, might as well give them an opportunity to learn with me as we go. So it puts them out there and it gives them exposure. Uh, we'll be getting as much knowledge as, as I would be working outside. Uh, at that point, I kind of gave up already because I was like, wait a minute, this is too much for me. It's my first short film, uh, this much stuff to do is, is too much stuff to do. Uh, it's a bit too complicated. And we filmed quite a few scenes actually, not a lot, but I think the first two, uh, which I'll show at the end of this, just to get you an idea of what we actually did. It was kind of funny, it has nothing to do with the cycle you guys know now. Uh, it was a completely different story. As a matter of fact, the cycle, the name, had nothing to do with the, the short film that, I, that, I, that, I'm, that I'm showing to you guys now. As a matter of fact, I think the cycle that it was, the initial cycle was an actual bicycle because at the end of the story that uh, I would fall off the bicycle and then I would see this, this monster and then I would run away, I think. That's, that, that was the story. It, it's stupid when I say it out loud now, but initially it was not a bad idea. Um, and so it, it was pretty tough. That was the failed cycle. Camera. Audio. Scene six, roll five, take one. Action. For you both, by the way. Cut. Oh, sorry. Camera. Audio. <laughs> he is. It is Ethan. No, you said audio. Oh, I thought you said Ethan. Guys, what the hell? Stop. Camera. Audio. Oh, wait. Ah. Oh, my fucking god. Camera. Audio. Scene six, roll four, take one. Why? Cut. Camera. Audio ready. Scene 6, roll 5, take 2. Action! Bring your rules closer. No, no, no. no. You said action, I'll yeah. yeah. And actually walk it. Do I delete it? No, 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 no. Just wow. keep going. Wow. Okay, redo, redo, redo. redo. Bruh. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Redo, redo. Do I delete it though? Yeah, just delete it. Oh, do I just keep it going? Just keep it going. Have you stopped it? Dude, yeah. yes. Is he recording again? We, we that's do, why. Do look, that's why. Next I, don't stop it. That's why I took away your phone. Uh, do okay, we do, we do. Three. Is it recording? Yeah. Action. Camera, I mean. No, I'll say action. Wait for my line. Sophie. Camera. Scene six, four, five, take three. Action. Bring your voice first, by the way. Cut. And that's pretty much the issue. That was the problem with it, and uh, I moved on. I stopped for pretty much six months, I think, because that was around 2018. Uh, by the time I finished filming a few scenes, it was already around like May, June, and I stopped because I gave up and it wasn't working. And that's when, in 2019, uh, guess where I got the idea again? It was in India, because I was there for the marriage. I was there in 2018 for the engagement, 2019 for the marriage. And uh, around that time, I got the proper idea of a story that makes sense to the cycle name and actually is a film that I could have produced and made and it would have been so awesome. I wanted it to be as, 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 as Hollywood as possible. Uh, I wanted it to be like a proper film you guys would sit down in the theater and watch because that's the kind of ideas that I had and it would have made sense. But obviously what you're seeing now is not what I thought I had in mind. But that's fine, because that was part of the process that I learned. As a matter of fact, everything I've learned in this film 
or in the making of this film for the past three years is, the, is stuff that I'll be applying onto my next short film that I'll be making, which is a horror genre, which I'll talk more about on my next video. And I didn't want to be the kind of guy who promises and never delivers, because to be honest with you guys, life is pretty tough right now in the army, and I barely get time to get and work on this. And all my friends who have been working on this film are now in the United States, Canada, UK, Australia, in universities, while I'm sitting down here doing two years in the army. So it's not easy for me to, you know, collate with them and get this stuff sorted out. Like Stephen, uh, he's kind of busy with, and, and I, I can't really, you know, force him to give me music whenever I need, because, because like I said, he's pretty busy. Uh, and so uh, that's pretty much why I kind of distant myself from, from those guys, because I don't want to be too much of a hassle or too much of a problem. Anyways, guys, I, I, I don't want to waste any more time. I know you guys want to see the actual film, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and stop this because it's time for you to watch what I've given my best ability to fix it as much as I could. So uh, here is Cycle, what it could have been, what it should have been, and what it is. Enjoy. There he was, standing there with a knife in his hand. Then, then what happened next? No, look, I don't remember the whole thing. This happened a really long time ago. And to be honest, it's none of your business. So just stay out of this, okay? Nothing on the internet. Wait, it could be a cover up. I mean, it would have damaged the school's reputation. It does make sense. But Marco, he should have known. That means he's hiding something. And that also means that there was some information that was hidden from the public. If I could find a way to... Hold on. Okay, I can look at the key logs and the potential cookies used. I can pinpoint a previously used IP address that has the website that was taken down. There it is. Wait a minute. 18th of July, 1999. The date of the murder. Okay, I can use this to check all the events that occurred in school that day. 
18th of July, 19th. It was a Sunday. What was a student doing in school on a Sunday? Hold on. The library had just finished being renovated. Oh, it was a reopening. Okay. Um, library. I should probably check the book logs. Hold on a minute, 18th of July. This one book was stamped three times in a span of eight hours. Huh. Excuse me, the library's closing. Now? Okay. Sir, what happened? The, the books are... <sighs> Quantum Enigma. This makes sense considering Dark Marco is a physics teacher. Page 6. Ch what is this? Chinese? This is, this is Chinese for glue. Glue. That doesn't make any sense. But page 18. It's an ancient symbol. From where? Of course, it's a Peruvian symbol. This is actually one of the most well-known ancient Peruvian symbols known to modern mankind. It's the earliest notation for a projectile weapon. In other words, a gun. Hold on a minute. 918. These pages are consecutive though. 918, 1999. Could it be the date? It must be. Page 99. There must be something there. Marco. Ever since that day, he's had short-term memory loss. He has to have used it to somehow keep track of the event. Something's in this, and he's hiding something from me. I need to find out what. Hold on, what is this? Wait, this is the logo for Project Ned. Dr. Marco talks about it all the time. He is obsessed with the research. He must have been using it as a form of memory technique. has to mean something that resonates to some form of... Wait. I've been looking at this the wrong way this entire time. He does have short-term memory loss, yes, but only about that event, and only of that event. He's trying to remind himself of something, probably about something that he has that he shouldn't be having. Something that he never disclosed in the day of the letter, and has got to great lengths to make sure no one found it. Whatever it is, wherever it is, it's in this book. 18 said, gun. 99, Project Ned. Three, what? That genius son of a bitch. He's talking about glue guns. Where would I find glue guns? I find glue guns in the design technology room. Which means, the three stands for the room number. Luckily I have the school's blueprint. 
I can use this to find where DT3 is. One, two, three. That's it. That's where I can find my next clue. Huh. It's Marco. What's he doing here? Hold on, this is the box that Marco just took out. It just so happens to be a box of glue guns, exactly the ones I'm looking for. Wait, there's an extra cardboard chunk attached in the bottom. Something's been inside it for a very long time. What well, looks like a key, but not the ones they manufacture nowadays. I need to follow Marco. He might have taken the key. He shouldn't be too far away. Marco goes to his desk to find his drawer to check on something that belongs to him. He takes out a key from his back pocket, which he got from the DT room, and unlocks the drawer. Marco takes out a photo from the drawer, takes a good look at it, gets very relieved, puts the photo back in the drawer, and locks it back up. Marco gets the key and puts it back in his back pocket, just for the key to fall down and land on the carpet floor, leaving no noise. So Marco is unaware of this and continues to walk and leave the room. Adam sees the entire act that Marco just performed, and hides outside the door as soon as Marco leaves, he waits for him to go far enough so that he can enter inside and find out what Marco is hiding. Adam enters the room, sees the key on the carpet floor and decides to pick it up. He takes the key, goes to the desk, opens up the drawer, and picks up the photo that's been in there for years and years, that's hidden by Marco. He takes a look at the photo and gets extremely shocked. Meanwhile, Marco is on his way in his hallway, checks his back pocket out of intuition and realizes that his key is missing. So he makes his way back to the room. Marco walks in into Adam looking through his stuff and gets shocked. He decides to confront him right then and there. Quite the detective, aren't we? I told you to stay away. Hey, hey, hey look, look, I, I just found something. Marco panics and decides to do something irrational by charging into Adam and starting this entire new brawl. 